practice herself for five minutes for an opening statement. And I do want to welcome everyone to the Comms and Technology Subcommittee hearing titled appropriately, Broadband, Deploying America's 21st Century Infrastructure. Also, I thank you to the witnesses for appearing as we examine the barriers to deployment and consider discussion drafts to facilitate the deployment of communications infrastructure. Broadband is the infrastructure challenge of this decade and the digital divide continues to frustrate so many Americans. We must cut through the red tape by streamlining permitting processes and implement accurate availability of data in order to solve the broadband dilemma. Lack of broadband access, particularly in our rural areas, is an issue which affects the constituents of numerous members of this subcommittee, Republican and Democrat. We are all tired of hearing stories about parents driving their children to the local McDonald's for internet access in order to finish homework assignments. We owe them better, period. The 5G revolution is upon us and we should modernize our laws to address issues such as tower siting and federal rights of way, which are tying the hands of our private sector. Let's consider the small cell phenomenon. Many carriers are now deploying small cells the size of pizza boxes as opposed to large towers. Small cells can be easily attached to freestanding poles, mitigate the risk of adverse environmental impacts, and are less likely to upset local zoning ordinances. They simply do not require the depth of review contemplated by outdated laws designed for larger towers. Each administration has attempted to spur broadband deployment, beginning with the Clinton administration's efforts in 1995, when GSA tried to streamline the permitting process for wireless antennas. 7.2 billion in federal grants and loans were awarded through NTIA's Broadband Technology Opportunity Program and the RUS Broadband Initiative Program as a part of the Obama Administration's American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. President Trump has signaled that broadband will be a significant part of his administration's planned infrastructure package. Therefore, we will be considering two discussion drafts that expedite broadband deployment. The first will assist these efforts by doing things such as creating an inventory of federal assets that can be used to attach or install broadband infrastructure. And two, requiring all land holding agencies to use common templates that when leasing space for wireless broadband attachments and number three streamlining processes for communications facilities location applications at the Department of Interior and the Forest Service. The second representative issues dig once initiative would mandate the inclusion of broadband conduit during the construction of certain highway projects that receive federal funding. In addition to reducing barriers to deployment, we must accurately collect and aggregate data to update the national broadband map. The map has not been updated since June 2014 when BTOP funding ceased. It is imperative that we fix these maps, but doing so is a fool's errand without precise data. This will ensure that private and federal investments are targeted at unserved areas. Unleashing broadband will create economic, educational, and healthcare opportunities for millions of hardworking taxpayers. A recent Accenture report notes that smart cities growth could result in a $500 billion impact on GDP over 10 years. People want broadband as much as new roads. Republicans and Democrats are eager to work together to solve this problem. Thank you, and I yield back. And at this point, I recognize Mr.